We do have patiently waiting in the green, my friend Professor James McKinney. Professor McKinney is a credentialed astrophysicist, a uh, mathematician who uh, cracked a hey, several thousand year old mathematical uh, puzzle <laughs> in a, a couple of years ago. Congratulations, Jim. And a radio talk show host, author, and um, a man that we rely on for a lot of excellent information. Good morning, Jim. John, good morning. How are you? Real good, sir. Uh, I want to check uh, the uh, time of the official U.S. government time clock this morning, and it was shut down because the government was shut down. They shut down this website, uh, which is an automated system that doesn't require any human beings to attend to. I was a bit shocked, Jim, and uh, I guess you're not surprised, though, are you? Yeah, the same thing happened with the NASA website, and so... These are automated, they're already funded, they're already paid for, and it makes you, it makes you realize that we literally do not have any more federal government. We yes. simply, it's gone. It's gone. And, well, that's you know, the intent. This, John, yeah, this, this made me realize that this would be the time, I think they're advancing the time in which they want to pull the power outage and the cyber attack and the, all the other goofy stuff that would bring in uh, basically a new banking system, new world order, and uh, basically martial law, just whatever changes they care to make without Congress, without anybody's approval, and uh, with middle manager Obama at the helm. Well, not, knocking out the bar, bar grid has been in the, in the, uh, this, in the uh, offering for quite a while. The... Uh, TV miniseries, America spelled with a K, back in the mid-1980s. We didn't know at the time because very few of us had access to the book that the uh, miniseries was based on. But that takeover of the United States by Russia, the beginning point of that was an EMP attack. So they've been they've been warning us for uh, basically 30 years, haven't they? Yeah, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the federal government. I actually put a posting on my page. I said, in lieu of the fact that we don't have a federal government anymore. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm the federal government, and if you want to follow what I tell you to do, you know, that's your prerogative because you don't have a federal government right now. Uh, anyway, Jim, uh, the uh, the news, of course, for quite a while, a number of months here, have been Comet Ison. Uh, there's been a lot of disinformation put out there, uh, speculation fueled by NASA. Give us an update on Comet Ison, if you would, please, sir. Uh, but here's what's going on. Uh, Comet Ison approached and has now passed Mars. Uh, Mars went Comet. And uh, I, I observed it. I had other people observe it. And uh, it might be one of the reasons that the government shut down, because it's the Mars, the coma around Mars is now extremely visible. This is an event we have not seen in thousands of years. I am amazed uh, at this, uh, uh, at the effect that took place. A number of days ago, on the, actually on the 24th, the comet Ison went green, one of my predictions, where it basically turned into a neon light bulb. And the uh, elements that uh, luminesce in green are carbon monoxide and arsenic and some of the other elements that are common in comet tails. But, uh, of course, NASA had their little, oh, it's ultraviolet light from the sun. Well, what's so special about ultraviolet light near Mars? Uh, why don't comets do this in other places? Exactly. Uh, all, all the time. You know, their explanations are so stupid that a, you know, the first level thinking at worst. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, two days ago on the 30th, Comet Ison developed the sunward spike that I predicted. I said, yeah, it's going to start uh, connecting. It, it did. It, it was a visible, extremely visible sunward spike. Uh, within the days of passing Mars right now, uh, Mars is in the tail of Comet Ison, and Mars itself has gone comet. Comet Ison, it's well, uh, very interesting. And by the way, all of the hype you hear, the end of the world, it's a planet coming in, it's Nibiru, none of this is true. 
Right. Uh, comet Einstein is a relatively small comet. Uh, it has no uh, direct path involving Earth at all. And so I uh, just want to clarify that. But it's an extremely interesting comet, and I almost think, I mean, this is so important to hide this information from the public. It's so important to the so-called world leaders that I even have, have considered that the entire shutdown of the federal government is to hide the information regarding Comet Ison. Well, that, uh, that's... In the fact that it, it's, the timing is very strange. October 1st was the first day that uh, Comet Ison really started to interact with um, with Mars. And like I say, this is an event we have not seen in 3,500 years or more as Earthlings. Uh, and the fact that a comet would interact with a planet, and then right now the planet itself is going comet, I've received emails from other people who have observed this, too. My personal, uh, I've been up uh, myself many, many nights uh, looking at this, and uh, my viewing conditions this morning were absolutely beyond crystal clear. And I watched this uh, going on for, oh, way more than an hour with extremely good equipment. Uh, what's interesting is all of the NASA equipment is offline, and that data is being taken. NASA is quiet as a church mouse. All of their websites are offline. And I suspect that the majority of scientists are being barred from seeing this. Uh, they're out on the street, and like, uh, like many people, when they're off the job, so to speak, when the government ain't paying them, they're not there. They cannot go into their facility. They cannot do their job. They can't go. They can't be a scientist and say, "Oh, I'm so interested in my science. That even if you don't pay me, I'll go do it." No, their door is shut. They they're cannot locked, they're locked they out. Cannot, they're, they're locked out. You mean. They have, yeah, absolutely. So the scientists themselves cannot see the data that is coming in. And of course, the military is around. The tier one level military and the scientists that work uh, with the military get to see the data, but that will never get to you and me. So right now, I'm the only source reporting actual live data from Comet Ison. Uh, so <laughs> that's, what a strange, strange situation. It, it but this is. event, yeah, this event is astronomically, in terms of astronomical history, is an event that is, uh, like I say, extremely important because we have not witnessed a comet come this close to a planet in that long, and uh, certainly in modern history. Uh, so to see Mars interact with the comet, first the comet starting to interact, turns green, develops the sunward spike, then connects with Mars. Now, I want to tell you what the data that NASA is hiding and the military, what it is showing. Nice. It is showing aur auroras on Mars. It's showing uh, the interaction of the electrical discharges between the comet and Mars. It's showing all of a sudden the comet brightening tremendously, which it is right now. It has grown tremendously over the last uh, day. And then Mars developing a comet coma. Uh, literally uh, about the size of a quarter the size of the full moon in the sky, uh, and it's very visible. So <laughs> this, is a, this is an astronomical event of historical proportions, and NASA is shut down. Now, Jim, NASA's automated systems are recording and storing all this information. Uh, do you have any opinion one way or the other if NASA will release the stored information on what's going on once the government gets open again for business? No, absolutely not. Uh, what will happen to these scientists, in fact, what's going to happen to the federal government is going to be very interesting uh, if they ever come back. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at kind of Temple 1, July 4th, I think it was uh, 2005. And uh, I, I was on, for example, that night, I was on the Coast to Coast AM radio show, and we were waiting for NASA to release the data when the deep impact probe 
crashed into the nucleus. And this was supposed to be a monumental event for NASA, proving that there's water somewhere deep in the core of a comet nucleus, because they couldn't find it up till then. Right. It wasn't on the surface. They had visited four or five comets before then, never saw a drop or ounce of water, only found hot, dry, tar-covered rocks. And so they said, well, the water's got to be deeper. Well, that data was supposed to be released and was supposed to be a, a major fanfare for the whole world to see this, and the data did not come out for six months. Very sheepishly, they released the data, and then all kinds of fudging happened with the data. Uh, Jim, we have a caller here, regular caller. We've got uh, Mike in Eastern at North Carolina. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dr. McKinney. Listen, I just wanted to call up and uh, just agree with you guys on a couple of things. Um, uh, when it comes to trying to inform people, uh, I've been out here uh, teaching and giving out thousands of DVDs and everything else, you name it, and Dr. McKinney is 100% right. So everything Dr. McKinney is saying is true. I just want to let the people out there know, listen to the guy. He knows what he's talking about, and so do you. <laughs> and that's and that's pretty much it, John. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for the thank call. You. We appreciate uh, it, Mike. we got about three minutes here to get out the best information we can, Jim. And I think that the November time frame that Comet Ison will be extremely visible to the public, more so than previous comets, uh, is what they're very afraid of because the public is worldwide is going to wake up and understand that uh, comets are not dirty snowballs, that there is electricity in outer space, that electricity can be used to run our society, the, con the energy control, the water control, all of those controls that the government needs to control the people could go away in a heartbeat. So uh, that's why I think they, they have to pull their power outage before then. I believe that's why the government shut down and all of this other stuff about Obamacare is just smoke and mirrors uh, because uh, eventually they will pass Obamacare. It'll go through and you will pay and all of your medical information will belong to the government, including your body. So, right. Uh, well, this all began uh, in, during the Clinton administration with, uh, they didn't call it Hillary Care, but uh, this has been around for a long, long time uh, with various attempts and failures to get it passed, hasn't it? That's a good point that no matter who's it is, uh, just Obama gets his name on it because he's the current uh, middle manager there. But, yeah, it could have been called Hillary Care or Billy Care or, or Bushy Care or whatever. Right. But, uh, yeah, right. they've been pushing this for a long time. Well, it's just something we'll have to deal with. I read on Drudge this morning, 25% of the Americans will uh, pay a fine rather than sign up for Obamacare. Uh, personally, I'm not going to sign up for it. What about you, Jim? I don't think it's, uh, it's nothing I want to have any part of. And uh, But uh, when you go to the doctor, they say, there's a form there that says they can give your medical information to the government if the government has cause to, uh, to uh, collect it. So. Right, exactly. Uh, Jim, we're out of time. Thank you for being with us, sir. That's it for the day. You all be safe out there. Get your medical supplies, energy cleaner, firearms ammunition now while you can. Never, ever give up your guns. Have a great, safe day, and God bless America.